All right, everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, welcome to our session, Note Taking in the Classroom, New Innovations and Strategies with our presenter, uh, Brian Friedlander. Before we begin, just a few housekeeping tips. Please turn off your video and mute your microphones. This just helps us with background noises. Uh, we would love to see your faces and hear you, but we do need to make it as distraction free as possible. Uh, our captions are enabled, and if you would like to view the captions, please click on the CC button at the bottom of your screen. And if you have any questions, please put in the chat box and the speaker will get to them at the end of the presentation. To bring up the chat quickly, you can do Alt plus H, and the meeting will end on time, so please be aware if the speaker is still talking, they may be cut off, and this is just so that the next session can begin on time. Again, thank you for joining us, and now we will have uh, Brian Friedlander begin. Have a great learning experience. Thank you. It's great. It's great to be here. Um, and uh, so today I'd like to talk about um, note-taking in the classroom. Just a little bit about myself. I'm an associate professor of education at St. Elizabeth University in Morristown, New Jersey, and an assistive technology uh, consultant. I consult to families, schools on, um, you know, different assistive technologies, but I, I wanted to hone in on note-taking because it is a, an area of great concern, especially as students move up through the grades from middle school and transition to high school and then on to college. And um, so today I'd like to talk about a host of maybe technologies you may be aware of and some you may not be aware of. So when we take a look at note-taking, and this is kind of the, the conundrum, is when you think about um, all the skills that are needed uh, and, and think of reflect on the students that we work with, they certainly have to be able to pay attention. And one of the areas that a lot of students have difficulty doing is that simultaneously processing of the content, listening, and then also having to write. Many of the students we work with have difficulties in the area of fine motor skills. And then a lot of students have language-based learning disabilities, and sometimes they have trouble kind of figuring out what's the most important thing to even write down or to record, and how do I organize that information on the page? So today I'm going to talk about a lot of different tools that may help with that. One of the accommodations that generally happens, especially maybe in high school and college, is the use of peer note-taking. And certainly there's a lot of logistics involved in that uh, in terms of not only paying the note-takers, um, it can be time consuming, it uh, can be also the logistics of getting the notes back to the, the students, um, the reliability of the notes. And probably one of the most important things is how do we, how can some of these tools be used to inc increase independence, whereas peer note-taking actually increases dependence. And this is a kind of a lifelong skill, and it really is important for students to kind of figure out how they can best take notes, whether in school um, uh, or when they're in workplace. And so these are really important lifelong skills for individuals to kind of figure out. So the goals for today are, you know, look at tools that may be easy to use. So I'll show you some easy ones, some more complex ones. The tools can provide a safety net for the student who may have difficulty with attention or um, may have difficulty with fine motor. And some of the tools remove that cognitive load uh, for the student. So it allows them to be more present um, in, in the session, in the class, which is really important. And the other thing too is, when we talk about the mental health of students, a lot of students, especially now who are returning to school, where they know that note-taking is not one of their strengths, their anxiety levels are increasingly high. And so a lot of the times these tools can help reduce um, anxiety for these students. So the first tools I'm gonna to talk about, some of you may be familiar and I'll actually show you a couple examples are, I call them smart paper devices. They're, I mean, they use paper and pen, they're lightweight and portable. They don't really change the way the student has to take notes. Um, one of the important things is that they're, um, the notes are shareable, which I'll, I'll show you. Some of the disadvantages is, of course, they're dependent on um, handwriting. There's no preset organization, no audio supports, and of course, loss of the notebook. So these are just um, two of, of many. Um, on the left-hand side is Hamlin. 
just released, it was about two years ago, a series of notebooks that take advantage of the, the Scribzy app. And so students can um, take notes and then scan them um, and store them and organize them. Most of you would probably be more familiar with the rocket book. This happens to be the rocket book orbit. You see the two little metal tabs at the top. Um, it uses magnets, so you can actually buy different templates. This is the Cornell method temp template that's available. And what's unique about um, this technology, this smart paper technology, is you probably see on the on the bottom these seven icons. And this is really quite interesting in that when the student can take notes and they have to use what's called the pilot friction pen, uh, which is an erasable pen. And when they're done taking the notes, they can basically um, color in one of those icons. And those icons refer to destinations that are set up in the app. This works with both Android and iPhone. And so students can organize their notes by placing them directly into folders in Google Drive, OneDrive. Um, they can even email these. So this can really help students to keep their notes organized. You can also use um, smart hashtags to actually name the file. So if you look at the, the top of that template, you'll see the title and the date. So students um, can automatically create files with names and dates um, so they can find information. The, the other thing too is with the um, Rocket Book, um, it's still somewhat in beta, and I always say your mileage may vary, but it has handwriting recognition. So students can go from handwritten notes to editable text right within um, the application, which is um, really um, exciting. And the Rocket Books come in many different formats, many different templates. Um, but again, for certain students, this might be a great way, especially um, if you want to kind of move them away from true paper so students can write their notes scan them, file them, and there you go. If you have students that are using their, their camera on their smartphone, one of the issues is the, you know, their photo library gets jammed up with all kinds of uh, you know, notes from whiteboards and everything else, and it can create a problem with organizing and finding, and these are searchable. So just a quick note, I, I know actually, um, the AT director from Stockton talked about this. It's kind of an extension of the smart notebook, but these would be great in the in, in the in the classroom when there's whiteboards. These are the beacons. They're they're basically those four orange triangles uh, that teachers can put up on whiteboards. And then using that same app app for the rocket book, they it, it, they can capture that. Uh, whiteboard information and also send it to the appropriate file in their, um, you know, in their Google Drive, OneDrive, wherever they want it to go. So this is kind of like an extension of the paper-based rocket books, but this works on whiteboards. So if um, th these are some devices that I've used, this is the Bamboo Slate by Wacom. Um, many of you may be familiar with Wac Wacom because they're, they're they create tremendous graphic tablets for artists. And so this basically uses their Wacom clipboard, which has all the technology built in it. You can use any paper pad you like that fits the size, and then you use their pen um, and you write on it and then using an app, um, you can send it to your Android phone or your iPhone over Bluetooth. It has handwriting recognition and is searchable, and you can share it to their cloud service. So this is kind of interesting. It's lightweight. And again, if you like pen and paper, this can be certainly a solution. I believe Wacom is moving away from this, but you can still find them um, pretty inexpensively in a small, in like a letter size and an executive size. Um, and they work, they work really, um, really well. I actually uh, use it to, to, to do infographics, but it's great for note taking. This is one that's being marketed. It's called the Rowrite 2 and the same idea. Um, you have uh, basically a pad uh, in, a, in, you know, in a folio and you write with their pen and then the information gets transferred to an app on an iPhone or Android phone and it has handwriting recognition. So 
Uh, these run about, I want to say about $120. You can use whatever paper you want um, in there, um, but it, you know, it basically has a receiver uh, that's touch sensitive in the portfolio itself that when you connect it to your phone through Bluetooth, it sends the contents over. So let's take a look at some of the advantages of using audio. Um, it certainly provides a safety net for students that uh, have trouble keeping up with um, you know, handwriting. The students are able to review their notes with teacher that you know what with what the teacher was saying, and again, there's no need to write down every word. You can write keywords, and then go back and listen to what was said. And these technologies can also be used with not only with words but with images. And we know that students don't have all the time in the world, and so this would allow them to kind of review information that they think they missed, and without having the need to review the whole lecture. So these are some smart pens. I'm going to show you a bunch of these. On the left hand side are the uh, Neo Dymo pens. These are fairly inexpensive, run around $79. Um, some of them have, you know, the, the reason why the cost may differ was how much memory they have, um, but this can be used with Neo Studio. These are apps that run on both Android and iOS and can capture both audio and notes. Um, both these pens take advantage of uh, an iPad, an Android phone, or an iPhone because uh, they need to use the microphone on a Bluetooth device on your phone to record the information. Let me just see there's something in the chat. Uh, yeah, okay. So um, this presentation is, I included a link in the resources um, note uh, that's on the um, embedded in today's schedule. On the right-hand side is the LiveScribe Symphony pen. Um, uh, you can see that uh, it, it's, it's thinner. So a lot of the pens have different designs. Uh, this also take, takes advantage of app that's running on your iPhone. Here's some other models. Um, you have the LiveScribe Symphony, um, the LiveScribe uh, Ager. And then this is a sneak peek of one that's coming. Uh, probably one of my favorite LiveScribe pens was the Echo. Um, if you try to find it today, you won't be able to. It's no longer being sold because they're developing the LiveScribe Echo 2. I, they, I, 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 I do follow the company Inodo that manufactures these. They ran into problems with supply chain um, and also they move their manufacturing to Mexico. So it's taking a little bit longer, but what's nice about the Echo 2 is that you can see it has a small <clears throat> LED screen. This one has the microphone um, and a speaker built in. That's why it's a little chunkier, but it's nice because you know the student doesn't need to take out the smartphone in order to uh, do recordings. Um, so that's something to um, hopefully we'll see we'll see shortly. So with the LiveScribe Smart Pen or any of these pens, you, it records the handwriting and and audio. And what it does is it synchronizes it. So basically it just, it's a bookmark. So as the student is writing, it bookmarks what was said at that point in time that then they can go back and review. Some of these technologies can also be used to create pen casts so that actually students can um, get pen casts from their teachers for like mini instructional lessons. And students also have the ability to replay and watch their handwriting um, take place on the smartphone. And then you could always back up your notes from the device using Mac or um, Windows. So as I was saying a little bit more about the Echo, this is the older version. Um, it has the microphone and speaker. It, has, it also has an RCA jack um, for a headset. And this one actually, one of the really nice features about this is that it supported these 3D um, microphones with noise cancellation. So when students were in large lecture halls, it would actually help to eliminate a lot of echo and a lot of noise. And these also supported um, sound stickers. These were little decals that you can actually record audio on. So you could take a worksheet and actually record audio um, on, on the worksheet with this 
particular technology. So hopefully the Echo 2 will be out soon. And you can see this is the, the, the newer pens. These take advantage of um, Bluetooth connectivity to um, an iPhone or an Android phone. And um, the only, I mean, only disadvantage with these is that the phone has to be, um, you know, connected um, through Bluetooth, which sometimes can get, sometimes doesn't always work as it should. And then there's also desktop software for Mac and Windows for backup. So this is just a, um, just a, a quick demo, just to get, if you're not familiar with this, get a feel for how this technology works. What I'd like to do is show you how we can use the LiveScribe pen for note taking in the classroom. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to turn it on and you see it's starting up. Let's try that again. What I'd like to do is show you how we can use the LiveScribe pen for note taking in the classroom. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to turn it on and you see it's starting up. To take notes, um, I'm just gonna tap on the record button and I'm gonna make believe I'm sitting in my science class and my teacher is asking me to uh, bring in um, some materials for a science experiment that we're going to be doing. So first thing I do is I click record and now I'm gonna do is uh, I'm just gonna write a science experiment list. So the first thing I heard was I uh, need to um, bring in some salt. And then my teacher asked me to um, bring in uh, mineral water and also uh, bring in a, a plastic container. And the last thing was to uh, uh, bring in some straws. And these were straws that were uh, bendable. Once I'm finished taking the notes, I'm going to hit stop. Now, when I go home, if I want to listen to my notes again, I could just tap on the each one of these, and then you would hear the um, the audio note. Was, uh, need to uh, bring in some salt. The teacher asked me to uh, bring in uh, mineral water and also. Uh, bring in a, a plastic container. And the last thing was to uh, uh, bring in some straws, and these are straws that were uh, bendable. Once I'm finished taking the notes, I'm going to hit. So you can see that uh, the student can always go back and refer back to the audio note. Um, that was uh, recorded. In a couple of couple of seconds, uh, this information is going to be uh, synced to my Evernote account, where I can also. So that just gives you a, a little um, idea of uh, how that works. The another company, Neo Neo Smart Pens, has a line of pens. These are just some of the different models. Some of them have different storage capacities. Um, some are. Kind of aluminum bodies versus plastic. Um, the one on the right is one of the newer ones, the Neo Dymo, which is a good way to get in, you know, to kind of test the waters. It's fairly um, inexpensive um, and um, works with another technology, which I'll show you in a little bit. This one, um, uh, th this one just came out last week. It's a collaborative between Lamy, which is a, a German um, company that. Uh, creates fountain pens, rollerballs, and ballpoint pens. Um, and they did a collaboration. This is the iconic Safari pen, which a lot of people are familiar with. Um, it has a really good ergonomic design. I think the OTs are going to like that grip at the bottom. It kind of forces students to hold the pen um, properly. And you can see it's a little girthier. Um, so it has a good feel, and, and it also takes advantage of the um, all the um, you know recording capabilities as well. So with the Neo Smart Pens, also utilize Bluetooth. They work with iPhone, Android, and there's also software for Windows. <clears throat> Currently, there's none for Mac. 
<clears throat> you can also record um, audio with the handwriting um, and it uses the Neo Studio software for recording. And um, they recently just set it up so that basically you could go online and take a look at your notes, say you don't have your phone with you, all your notes synchronized um, in the cloud. Um, so you can have access to that um, as, as well. I, I'm gonna, for those of you, um, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna run the video. I have a lot of information, but I, I included this in here and you can get that in the, um, in my presentation. Yeah, so with all these technologies, they all use specific paper. You have to buy the notebooks um, from the companies. They have embedded um, watermarks because the pens have cameras at the tip um, that know exactly what page you're on. Um, the cost of the notebooks has got has come down and is equivalent to what you might pay for, you know, other branded um, notebooks. So. This is a, an interesting technology just came out um, a couple of months ago. Some of you may be familiar with boogie boards. So this takes the boogie board to the next level. It utilizes actually a Neo smart pen with just a stylus tip and then using the um, software on an iPhone or Android phone, anything you write gets sent over Bluetooth um, to the, um, you know, to your, your smartphone. So if you want to go truly paperless, you can. After you've written your notes, you just take your, <clears throat> you take your pen and you see that there's a little decal at the bottom of the screen. You tap it, all the contents get, get sent over to your iPhone or Android phone. And then you push that big button at the top, it clears it and you're ready for your next page. In the software, you can organize your, um, your pages. It currently doesn't have handwriting uh, transcription, whereas the LiveScribe and Neo smart pens do have transcription. But with a little hack, um, you can actually get Google Keep or even now in iOS 15 in the Photos app, you can actually um, do uh, handwriting recognition. So again, might be an interesting uh, tool to take a look at. So in terms of using audio, probably the biggest player in this marketplace is Sonicent. Um, they came out uh, many years ago with audio note taker for Mac, PC, and smartphones. Uh, but they're transitioning now to um, Glean, which is a web-based application that takes advantage of loading in PowerPoint presentation, Google Slides, PDFs, and associating audio with each slide. And then I'll talk a little bit about the Neo uh, Rico, which is an audio um, recorder that pairs up with um, some of the Neo smart pens. So um, Sonicent Audio Notator, it's still available. It's a really large application. It's really full featured. I think it has actually um, got feature creep. And I think Sonicent realized that when the, based on the feedback that they received and they came out with a much sleeker version um, with Glean. But oops, let's go back. So I'm gonna play a little video for those of you maybe may not be familiar with um, the, the concept of kind of audio. Um, this gives you a good introduction. We can't all do things in the same way. That's why it's important to help people who need to do things differently. But this is getting harder. Even though the number of students who need support is increasing, budgets for this support are decreasing. The challenge becomes how to provide these students with accessible, independent learning options and provide a cost-effective solution for administrators. We like a challenge. Sonocent Audio Notetaker is software that's about creating independence, both for students and for those supporting them. It's a study tool for students who struggle with note-taking, which is both simple to use and simple to administer. This is how it works. The software chunks speech phrase by phrase, enabling you to use color to highlight the most important things as you're hearing them. It's like a highlighter pen for speech. You can also organize your recording into manageable sections, like paragraphs. So now you know what you should listen back to. You'll never miss important information. You can focus on listening instead of on writing, and you can create your notes in your own time. And that's not all. It's easy to edit your audio, and you can add text, slides, and images alongside. When you're done, extract your color highlights into a new file. You can also export your notes to view on other devices. Record from our free app or import audio recorded from elsewhere. 
You can even use Audio Notetaker to capture online videos, webinars, and Skype calls. Administering Audio Notetaker couldn't be simpler. There are various license options available, including a loan license, which allows staff to digitally lend the software over and over again, with access to a web control panel for managing the whole process. Students can also download a 30-day trial from our website to see if it's right for them. Audio Notetaker is not only cost-effective, but also gives students control over their own learning. To find out more, visit our website or download a free trial yourself. So that gives you a little bit idea of what it does. Um, but as I said, Sonicent is moving to Glean, which is a web-based application, runs right in the browser, and a nice part of it also can work in Chromebooks as well. It's very lightweight, and all, all the notes are stored um, in the cloud. Uh, this is what the interface looks like. It, it does change, but on the left-hand side, the student would see uh, basically a slide from a, it could be a, like, you know, PowerPoint or a Google slide or a PDF file. And in the center is students can actually type some, some quick notes, or they can also use those icons at the bottom to kind of, um, in a sense, tag information as it's being said. And then on the, on the right-hand side, those are the audio chunks. And uh, again, you can see that we have a, an exclamation mark with a red decal. And so students can basically, as they're listening to the information being provided by their teacher or instructor, they can tag it and then they can always go back and look at the um, information. So it's a really handy um, system. There's also a, an app available for Android as well as iOS. So if students are in classrooms that are being driven by, I'll call them slide decks. This could be a really good option because basically the student is recording audio that's associated with each slide and they can go back and review it. Uh, just for time constraints, I'm just gonna, gonna go past that. So this is, um, this is a, this was actually a Kickstarter that came out late, oh, late last year and it's called Rico from also Neo, the company makes the Neo pens. It's really small. And the advantage of this is that the student can use this with one of the Neo smart pens and the Neo, any one of their notebooks and timestamps what was recorded in this device. It's very lightweight and small. I'm actually gonna put this under my, um, just, to, just to kind of show you, you can see how small, that recorder is. So that's an audio digital recorder. And then this is what the Dymo pen looks like. So a student can go in with the Rico and the pen and then a notebook and basically turn this on. The pen marries to the recorder using Bluetooth and then anything they write on the paper gets timestamped with audio. So this can be a really good solution. Again, the phone doesn't have to be out. This can stay charged for a very long time. It charges with a USB um, cable um, and they can use it with the, the Dymo pen, which is uh, makes for a nice, uh, really nice uh, solution. And also fairly, fairly inexpensive. I think it's about, about $70 for the um, audio recorder. So how does it work? So this is the digital pen. You have the recording device, the digital notebook, and whatever, whatever is written on the page um, gets synchronized um, with what was written, and the students can always go back and look at it. As I said before, this is great in math classes, science classes, even when students are drawing images. So it's not only for text-based kinds of information. So these would be the components that the student would have to go into the classroom with, the Dymo pen, the Rico recorder, and one of the digital um, notebooks, um, and then they can, get, they can get going. So this is $128. You can see some of the um, controls. There's volume controls. There's also a, um, you can actually plug a headset into this um, as well, earphone jack, so students can use this privately as well. I'm gonna, gonna, I think I'll, I'll do, I'll, just, I'll actually show, show you this. 
Hi, this is uh, Dr. Friedlander. And, um, in this video, I'd like to show you the Neo Rico and the Neo Dymo Pen and how a student could use this technology to record audio notes in the classroom. Um, this solution is unique in that it allows students to write their notes, but then go back and um, listen to what the teacher was saying at the time they actually wrote the note. So it really is time stamping the handwriting and linking it to the audio note. So this is the <clears throat> Neo Rico. It just came out. It's really small. It has a couple of controls. I'm actually going to do a demo, so I'm going to turn it on. And you can see the uh, power light turned on. Now I'm going to open the Dymo pen and the power button is here. And when it's on, you'll see the light. And also you may have heard some audio. I now paired the pen to the Rico recorder. This is fairly lightweight, so a student could bring this into the classroom uh, and they don't have to have their smartphone on, on to record the, um, the notes. And I'm going to use this notebook. Uh, students need to, need to use the notebooks that are provided by um, the company. This is digital paper. It may be hard to see, but there is a watermark on each page so that um, it makes it easy for the device to um, know exactly where I am on the page. So just imagine I'm in a class and I want to record the notes. Uh, so I will be doing the speaking, but again, this could be a teacher doing a lecture, or this can even be like a YouTube video or a video that a teacher has put together, uh, especially as students are spending more time in remote learning. So I'm going to hit the record button. You heard that little audio and you see the red light. And now I am using the Neo Dymo pen and it's, uh, it's linked uh, to the RICO. And I can basically timestamp my notes with audio. So this is ideal in um, lectures. It can also be used with uh, YouTube or in remote learning. It's not dependent on text so that students can even draw, you know, if they're in a science class, they can draw an image and then the teacher says, that is the nucleus. That is the cell wall. And it allows for nutrients to pass through the wall and exit the wall. When I'm done, I'm just going to press the record button. Now, um, just imagine on the student, uh, you know, I took some notes, I can go back to my classroom, or back to my home and tap on any of the text or images that I that I wrote and listen to the notes and audio cue up. With uh, YouTube or in remote you know, if they're in a science class, they can draw an image and then the teacher says, no. So you kind of you kind of get the idea of how that works. And again, very lightweight, fairly inexpensive, and again, keeps the smartphone um, off the off the desk and uh, less distractions. So I um, just want to talk about, um, especially as we, we move into arenas where um, students might need transcription services, a lot of these services are now taking advantage of machine learning. 
artificial intelligence. Some of them are free or premium services, and some of them you can actually use to, you know, the, use your smartphones to, re, you know, to record. Of course, you need to consider um, the cost for transcription. So what I just want to show you quickly what this will look like. Um, Microsoft, if you have an Office 365 account, Microsoft um, is giving you 300 minutes of transcription. And you can upload audio files in the following formats, WAV, MP4, M4A, and MP3. So I'm just going to get out of this for a second. So right now, the transcription services are built into Word Online, but they will be coming to the uh, version of Microsoft Word that you have installed. Um, all these applications now speak to the web, just a matter of um, hooking it up. So if you go to Microsoft Word Online, um, you'll notice that you can always dictate, but if you click the drop down, you'll see transcribe. It will open up this window and then you can actually um, drop in. You can either upload audio or start recording. So if I click upload audio, I can select the audio file. So let's see. So here's a M4A file. I click open, and then it start pro it starts processing. When it's done, it will turn that um, into uh, editable text, which you will see hopefully in another minute or two. Doing a, doing a lot of stuff over Zoom here. What's exciting about this, even for graduate students that might be doing dissertations or interviewing, this could be ideal because it actually will separate speakers as well um, if you're doing an interview. So let's give this um, another minute or so. It looks like we're, and then it also saves the file in OneDrive. Um, so you can see, I can actually play and listen to the audio. Today, we're going to take a look at e-ink devices that can be. And then it, this is the transcription. And then if I want to, I can click add to document. I'm just going to do just the text. So you can see the text is now here. Um, I can come in here and, you know, it's totally, you know, it's totally editable text. So Microsoft gives you 300 hours of transcription free um, each each month. So you could take advantage um, of that if you like. But you can imagine students who need access to that could take advantage um, of that. So some commercial companies, Otter AI, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna play this, just gonna let you know it's there. You can actually, students can connect their schedules and calendars with Otter AI. So if they have a Zoom meeting, um, all they have to do is on their phone, uh, go to the Otter app and it will know that um, there's a meeting coming up and it will do, it will create um, and transcribe audio notes in meetings or, um, or lectures. Um, so let me just, I just wanna show you the interface. So this is, you can see here, it's connected to my calendar. It knew that I had a um, virtual note. And if I hit record, it would start recording. And this also gives you, I think, 600 recording minutes a month free. Um, oh, actually it says six, uh, oh, that's for the, the pro version. So they give you, um, I think about 600 a month. And if you want more, of course, you can always pay for, um, pay for more. This is a um, another service. Uh, same idea. You you know you can pay for this is Note Taking um, Express, and uh, this basically lets you either start recording, or you can also upload your recordings and pay for you know pay for the transcription. But there's a lot of these services that are coming online, um, and again, this could be great for college students that need um, some assistance. Um, this is this provides uh, closed um, captioning and transcripts, but again, it could be a tool for taking notes. And again, most of these also have limitations in terms of how many minutes um, you can use them for, but they, always, they, they do have paid services. So just the kind of the future of note-taking devices. Um, Many of them um, use what we called e-ink. These are the same screens that or on the Amazon Kindle readers, uh, they take they they stay um, 
charge for a very, very long time. Um, and these are some that I personally use. Um, paper from uh, Quirk Logic. This is um, a, a very, it's a large device um, and it uses a stylus. Uh, what's nice about these is um, you can you can write on them, store you know store your notes, um, and organize them. Moby Scribe. Uh, this is a pretty a, a small device, less expensive. I would say the Remarkable Two would be the equivalent of sort of the Apple in this uh, in this space. It's a beautiful writing experience. The nice part about all these devices is that there's no distraction. Um, they all have different features, but um, while they do have Wi-Fi to synchronize notes across different platforms and cloud services, there's no, these do not have um, internet services, uh, they have no, no audio, and so the writing experience is really paramount, um, a really incredible writing experience. Some of them do have handwriting recognition, some don't, it just depends, but um, they really allow one to um, organize your notes um, the way you want them notif you know the way you want them uh, to be organized. So the but the writing experience is second is really second to none. I mean it's um, I mean I have an iPad with an Apple pencil. The remarkable too just takes that writing experience to uh, another level. It's not an inexpensive tool, but it's one that if you're trying to truly go paperless, um, this can be um, these can be great, great tools. Um, and if you want, I actually um, developed an online course. It's six dollars, and it's provided through actually uh, texting. If you want to learn more about e-ink um, and how you can utilize this for note taking, that is available. And we talked about the carbon copy pen, and then of course, um, those those students that are using iPads certainly they can use you know apps like uh, OneNote, Notability. Rome Research, Evernote, um, Otter. So there's lots of different note-taking apps that um, are, um, are available for students on you know, more dedicated devices like iPads. So there's some more information. Probably Notability is one of the top apps for note-taking on the iPad. And also students might enjoy using mind mapping applications. Uh, one of my favorites is MindMeister. Um, which is um, which is which is really great, but there are some others out there. And again, students can help to organize their ideas for writing, taking notes. And the nice part about mind maps is that you can move the, the ideas around. So for students that want to, you know, quickly take down ideas and then after the session move things around, they can do that as well. I'm not going to do a demo of that. So for students, um, occasionally have students um, who want to be able to pull text from books and textbooks. Um, and so there's a lot of uh, different, you probably see them if you're on Facebook or just kind of um, roaming the web. They're like personal scanners. Um, the C-Pen reader can not only read text, but you can plug in a USB cable and you can, students can actually um, scan text and bring it into Microsoft Word or uh, Google Docs without having to actually add any additional um, software. So if you, students are looking to um, basically bring text in from textbooks, they can use it with a lot of these different personal scanners that you see uh, being promoted on Amazon and Facebook. So just some, as we wrap up, some things <clears throat> to think about. What are you trying to capture? Um, if the student's in a large lecture hall um, and the, the teacher tends to you know, write on a whiteboard, um, you, uh, maybe you wanna look at you know, a smart pen or maybe you wanna look at you know, some sort of um, you know, using a smart notebook. Um, or if the teacher uses PowerPoint slide decks, then certainly something like Glean could be really helpful. Or are you taking notes, books or journals, can you get them digitally? Or do you wanna use a, a personal scanner? So just some things to think about. And then when you're working with students with any of these technologies, um, you, we need to kind of work with students to listen for keywords. Um, and write them down uh, or actually create some meta tags or even abbreviations. And also some students might be better off with drawing images and I icons or doing some sketch note taking. And also if, you could, if they're gonna be recording notes using digital pens, 
uh, developing a shorthand can be a really helpful strategy. Um, and with PowerPoint lectures, uh, if the student doesn't have access to like Glean, students can, um, let, let's say, print a thumbnail. So you can print like three down a page um, and you can actually paste them onto some of the digital paper and then use it with the smart pens and have the audio um, associated um, with it. Um, but again, just some quick strategies. And if for remote learning, certainly something like the, the RICO or something like Otter AI could be um, helpful. Again, um, you know, taking a look how we work with students, helping them identify key points um, when they're in lectures can be really helpful. And I know that a lot of the disability centers on uh, university and college campuses have seminars and webinars for students and note taking. So those would be highly advisable for students. So you can see here, what I've done is I printed out the, um, uh, the thumbnails. I, I just glued this onto digital note paper and then I can basically just write with my smart pen on the right hand side. And now the notes would be linked to that particular slide. So that's, got everything in in about 46 minutes. That's pretty good. Um, if you um, have, uh, you know, if you have any questions, please feel free to um, contact me. I appreciate your time spending with me this morning. And like I said, um, looks like someone put a link to the doc, uh, to this presentation in, um, in the chat. You can get that. If you have any questions, I'm glad. I know we have to get kind of wrap things up, but I'm glad to answer any questions. If you want to unmute yourself, that would be great. Brian. Yep. Quick question about Glean. Yes. Can it be purchased for just one person or do you have to get like a whole school license for it? They, they actually have individual licenses. So you can, um, parents can, I, and I, I think it's, it's something like maybe $10 a month. I mean, it's fairly inexpensive and uh, it's basically uh, cloud-based. So it, it works really well, whether the student has Chromebook, Mac or Windows computer. Uh-huh. Great. And, and do you know anyone in K-12 schools that's using Clean? Not currently, no. No. Okay. All right. Thanks. So I see there was a question in the, in the chat, and it always comes up. Um, audio recording in schools can be an issue. Um, I actually had a conversation yesterday with a school I consult with um, because I, I did discuss the solution with a parent um, for a high school student. Um, and every, every school has their own... Um, own policies uh, with regard to um, audio recording. So I would say check it out with the school district. I, my, my sense is I think parents with students with disabilities uh, where the student really needs this technology, they can prevail in writing it into an IEP. I've worked with a number of students who had um, multiple concussive um, injuries and the smart pen was like, it was unbelievable for them. But it was written into their IEP or 504 plan. Um, I reviewed, you know, they, we reviewed the policy for audio recordings um, so that it would, you know, it would be used appropriately. And the student had a, you know, had a very fantastic school year as a result. Any other questions? Glad to entertain. You may also, for the, those of you that may be hesitant to purchase these, um, you may actually may find um, in the state, we have some lending libraries for assistive tech and you might be able to you know, loan, get a loaner for a period of time to test it out before you invest um, in the technology. So trial is always a good, good thing to do. Let's see another question in the chat. Right. Any other questions or comments? We're going to have a great uh, rest of the day at the at the summit. And um, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. And um, have a great have a great day. Thanks so much, Brian. Have a good one. Bye.